Hello. In this edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about automation. Let's do this again because I want to... We'll leave the reverb going nuts. Actually, let's not. Let's kill the reverb and turn the delay back on because the delay might be easier for you guys to hear. Uh, I think the nature of this uh, these videos... Uh, Panzer has to be in every single video. Damn dog. You can't just lay there me good. Anyway, um, I think the delay will make it easier for you guys. And I think the way the video is set up, it, it's probably going to be easier to hear with the delay just because I can't mix the way I normally would because I'm trying to teach. Okay, so we're going to click on... Uh, let's go through that again. Right here is the, the little drop down. And you can see it's telling us we already have one being used. That's the volume. If we click there, we'll see it. Now, if we also click on more... We can click on sends, and I want to go do send one now. And notice there's an enable or level. Enable means we can keep um, an effect, a send off, um, and then all of a sudden, pow, it's on. The only problem with that is, is we don't have any control or level, and I, I can do the exact same thing with level most of the time, or every time. So let's try affect our delay here. Let's turn the delay all the way off, and then turn it up real loud right here. And there went my loop, whoopsie. Okay, so you get the idea there, and I'm actually, I didn't realize it, but I'm, my levels are really bad right now. This virus track is, is squashing my two bus, because I probably have a bunch of dumb crap I put on from other tutorials. But So kind of ignore that, but that would actually re, uh, clamp down um, the virus track quite a bit when it was peaking on some of this louder stuff from that first automation. But you get the point. Um, let's see, we could do volume, we can do uh, panning. You can see here it says uh, Cambridge uh, frequency gain uh, LC low filter most likely something like that. Um, and let me look at the Cambridge. That's used as an insert, which I think I've it on bypass. I do, but uh, pretty much anything you see here, any knob can be automated. Now let's talk about another way to, to input automation, and this is another thing. And I, I've used this a lot more here as I gotten older. I don't know if it's just laziness or what, but I find it to be a little bit faster and when I'm mixing, I don't want to have to switch brains into uh, menus and draw on lines. And so we have this little W button, which means write. Um, and what that means is it's going to record whatever I do and keep it. Um, in other words, um, well, I'll just show you. We'll click on virus and channel. Same thing as clicking on E. Now, it's going to listen to what I'm doing on this volume fader. And we'll just check it out. Check it out and watch. And that actually kind of sounds like a pump and compressor almost. Um, now, I'm going to turn off the, the right now because I've, I've recorded my take and now I just want to listen back to it. And it's more of a good habit to do that and be real careful. You leave that button on and all oh, hell breaks loose because uh, you'll be just in EQs like as a track plays and in the beginning you'll have this old sound and the, the end of the new sound and the middle it's all screwy. I've, I've pissed off some clients with that one before. Damn space heater, shut up. I hate winter time. All right, anyway. Uh, Let's listen. And that, that's kind of an example of it being used creative, er, creatively. Excuse me. I'm new to this English business. I only have 31 years. 30 years. Um, and let's hear it in context now. I wonder if that that actually kind of sounded cool. I might even actually use that effect or a compressor doing something similar. Anyway, that the cool thing is, is, is we can do that, and it's a more organic, just natural, you know, like a random, crazy, natural way of doing it. Um, and that applies to everything. Um, let's go. Let's write some more automation real quick. With uh, we'll use this uh, reverb send. 
I should do the delay send. That might be more fun. Okay, so we press. I think right applies everywhere. Yes, so wh whatever I do, it's going to work. Here we go. Okay, nothing real special there. I'm just being an idiot, but let's take a look at it. It'll be right here on send level one, and that's what I just drew. So you can see where you can just mix and it will know, and this is ex exceptionally useful on things like filters, uh, more for electronic music really, but it can be used for anything nowadays. Um, creative instruments, because uh, it lets you to be a little bit more um, uh, like like it would be like if you're playing with a guitar pedal and going <laughs> You know, like a good one for that uh, off the top of my head was the, the Moog filter um, by UAD, for example. You can do a lot of this really crazy resonant thingy. So it, I guess that's kind of beyond the, the scope here. But the point is you can be creative um, by using the, the right feature and, and do things that maybe aren't quite as possible uh, with just drawing. I would never take the time to draw that big old mess right there. I can tell you that. Um, let's see. And we can... Um, I don't think there's anything we can't automate. Again, I say that this is individual tracks. We can automate. Um, these are returns from the delay track. And so my delay is going nuts uh, here. Turn it down a little bit. Let's see, I can just. Delay's killed now because on the return, even though we're still sending to the delay, when it comes back, um, I'm killing it right here. So if I deleted this. And you'll see a little level, so there's it's coming back. So uh, you can, uh, uh, I think we said groups. We can edit, we can uh, automate, which I'm not really doing, but the drums. You get the idea there. Um, we can automate returns from uh, the synth tracks, wherever the, the RBSD instruments folder. Uh, so let's see. All right, it's just a snare, but we can make the snare turn through the R button. We'll ramp that up. And we hear more snare. All right, we'll turn the snare way down. And when, when you really get into mixing, like messing with a listener, sometimes just yanking that snare back a little bit can, can change the whole groove of the song. It's pretty wicked stuff. Um, highly recommended whenever you get around to that sort of thing. Um, when you have Cubase conquered. Okay, I think that basically covers the... the, the God, ugh, I keep on saying basic. <laughs> that covers the basics of, of Cubase automation. And again, I, I encourage you to dig deeper, but just realize it's super important and it's super easy to implement, whether you use a mouse or a, a controller, which I don't even have one. I probably should someday, but I'm pretty happy with a mouse. But um, Or whether you just do your normal, um, or kind of record the automation uh with a more organic, human-like feel using the R button, or W button. Man, I'm confusing. All right, thanks, guys.